Good morning, St. Patrick's. Good morning. Oh, y'all can do a little better with enthusiasm. Good morning. Good morning. When I say God is good, if you would respond by saying all the time. When I say all the time, God is good. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Oh, a little bit more louder. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Praise God. Praise God. I bring you greetings from the Diocese of the South, specifically from Archbishop Foley Beach and Bishop Frank Lyons. I have the opportunity of working with our bishops as canon to the ordinary. And we are so very grateful for all the things that St. Patrick's is doing within this community and for the leadership that you receive through Father Chris as well as Father Wesley. And I especially uh, take this opportunity to thank Father Chris for the opportunity and invitation to be here uh, this morning to share, for, uh, to share from the word. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Gracious Lord, we just thank you for this day and we thank you for this time. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity that you have given us to come into your courthouse and to call upon your name and to worship you. Father, we thank you for your word. We ask, O oh Lord, that you allow us to take something from our scripture reading this morning and allow us to make it applicable in our lives. We ask all these things in your loving and precious Son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. I saw a t-shirt that said, FOMO made me do it. FOMO. Fear of missing out. Fear of missing out. So the question this morning is, did the man in our gospel today have that? Or phobo, fear of better options. Or photo, fear of doing anything. The man ran up, he knelt down, and he asked Jesus, what must I do to inherit eternal life? It's like, what is the meaning of life? Or what should be my aim? Or how do I attain it? Notice Jesus is expressly teaching here the Ten Commandments are necessary. And they're necessary to be kept for eternal life. Jesus looked at him with love and made a spiritual diagnosis. And he says, you are missing one thing. And we see in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 25, it says, as they listen, they're Secret thoughts will be exposed, and they will fall on their knees and worship God, declaring God is truly here among you. There was actually a second implicit charismatic thought by Jesus when he said, You shall not defraud. You shall not defraud. The man was likely a large landowner, which pretty much meant that he was not exactly probably the pleasant guy to be around when it came to the peasantry. So the man may have kept all the commandments so perfectly, after all, because of the Greek translation implies that he had great estates. That is the connotation when it says he had many possessions. Notice that the man's face fell, and he went away sad because he had so many possessions possessions. A well-known author once wrote the following, quote, there are moments when it is clear if I have eyes to see that the life I am living is not the same as the life that wants to live in me. In those moments, I sometimes catch a glimpse of my true life, a life hidden like a river beneath the ice. And I wonder What am I meant to do? Who am I meant to me? End quote. The man did not follow his true vocation. To follow Jesus after giving away all his possessions. Jesus' counsel is meant for all of us. Since we are always able to go deeper by letting go being more detached of those things that possess us and hide us of our true desire, the wisdom and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The message is about having a single-minded commitment, not just in possessions, but also in one's life as a disciple because of the promise 
persecutions that will come. Our material goods are entrusted to us by God, not for our own personal advantage, but for the privilege of using them for the good of others, for the glory and honor of our Lord. Ownership makes us a sword of prov- by providence. Ownership makes us a steward by providence. So if you would ask this rich young man, what do you do for a living? It's like asking, what is your purpose in life? To him, losing his job meant losing his identity when Jesus would have given him that also much more for a more satisfying life. St. Ignatius of Loyola said that a Christian discernment should eventually move toward holy indifference, recognizing the things that are not of God. So my dear friends, in conclusion, notice that Jesus promises the following him, even giving, after giving everything away, nothing of consequence will be lost through discipleship. Indeed, what you left behind will be replaced a hundredfold. There is also a striking contrast between the plethora of benefits promised for this life and the single reward of the next life, which implies that the latter, eternal life, is more valuable than all the advantages of the present life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Gracious Lord, we just once again thank you for this time that you gave us, O Lord, to worship you. And we give you thanks, O Lord, for all the blessings that you have given each of us in our lives. Lord, as we continue on into this brand new week, we ask that you go before us, that you prepare the way. Lord, we ask that you allow us to use our talents and all that we have for the honor and glory of your name. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.